Sir James, I think you missed something here. <laughs> Meet Sir James Dyson. He rarely misses a thing, especially when it comes to vacuum cleaning. He's the guy who decided to ditch the bag and show us the dirt. Anger and frustration, you having to bend down and pick things up, the vacuum cleaner wasn't sucking. As an engineer, I figured that it was the bag that was the problem. Soon, images of this local sawmill swirled in his head. That funnel shape on top is known as a cyclone. It separates dust using centrifugal force. But could it work on a smaller scale? Well, the, the first thing I did was to, on the kitchen table, as it were, to make a prototype of a cyclone a small one that would fit on a vacuum cleaner. My first prototype appeared to work. He eventually realized he would need two cyclones, a bigger outside funnel to collect larger debris and a thinner interior one to filter fine dust. But um, that, you know, it took me 5,127 prototypes. 5,000 prototypes. Over about That's 5,000 five individual yes. discrete yes. failures. Yes, all failures, but interesting failures, fascinating failures, because I learned something from each one. Were there times when you thought about giving up? Oh, well, yes. I mean, you know, the long dark days where I'm going out every day to my shed and getting covered in dust and coming back in and, and saying what a rotten day I'd had. But, you, you know, my wife was very supportive and she said, you know, go back out there, make it work. By 1982, he felt he'd perfected his vacuum cleaner and went searching for a manufacturer to license it. As I approached the obvious people, the people who are now my competitor, um, and they, the Hoovers, the Electroluxes. And I know Hoover wouldn't see me uh, unless I signed a bit of paper saying that anything that came out of the conversation between them and was me theirs. But it was theirs, you see? So I thought that was dangerous. But none of the others, like Electrolux and ShopVac, were willing to build it either. So I thought, well, if they're not going to do that, there's a great opportunity for me to do that. First, he would head to Japan. A company over there had agreed to license Dyson's design. It then built a vacuum called the G-Force, which hit the market in Japan in 1986. The royalty money James earned from the success of the G-Force gave him a boost towards creating his own vacuum cleaner and company, but he still needed more. I went to venture capitalists and the government and all sorts of people, and they all rejected me. So in the end, I managed to persuade a bank to lend me a million pounds. So the big companies weren't willing to take the risk, but you were willing to risk everything. Yeah. How afraid were you of failure? Well, I was terrified, but um, I wanted to do it. I believed in it. My friends thought I was mad. I mean, everybody thought I was mad. Undaunted, he founded his namesake company from his shed in 1992. The next year, his first machine, the DC-01, rolled off the production line, and 18 months later, the roughly $300 machine was the best-selling vacuum in the UK. A crazy idea Dyson wisely protected. You've got to have a patent, because there's no point in going through all that agony and spending all that money if you can't stop other people making it. 43 million vacuums later, Dyson now employs nearly 4,000 people in about 60 offices worldwide, including this state-of-the-art global headquarters in England, where every product undergoes rigorous testing to ensure it will meet not just international requirements, but Dyson's own stringent standards. In 2011, the company boasted an annual revenue of more than one and a half billion dollars. Could you ever have imagined that? Ten million sounded a lot, and a billion is unbelievable, yeah. Unbelievable, too, to Dyson is that, according to Forbes, in 2012, he hit number 255 on its list of the world's wealthiest people. And you're Sir James. Yes, yeah, this is an English tradition. That's right, he's even been knighted by Her Majesty the Queen for his contribution to British business. His products also command impressive prices, anywhere from $200 to about $650, a cost that's not lost on this ambitious inventor who's constantly looking to improve our everyday lives. Seeing someone deciding to spend all their hard-earned money on what you've made and the, you know, the, the thing you've invented, it's, it's the ultimate pleasure, really.